Okay, so this presentation is going to cover two different disorders. One is called the somatoform category or classification, and the other one is dissociative disorders. Some of the information is additional to what is in your textbook, so make sure you write all the pieces down. Okay, so the first one is somatoform. Somatoform, um, we're looking at soma, which is usually known as body. Okay, so it is characterized by physical symptoms that seem to suggest a physical disorder. So I have a pain in my leg, a pain in my leg. But when they examine it, yet there's no physical causes for it. Some may experience dizziness, blurred vision, or chronic pain, yet there's no physical evidence. So literally the pain or their perception is just something that is different or abnormal in their brain or their thought process. Bye. See ya. There's different types which you need to know conversion disorder, hypochondriacs, or hypochondriasis, and then the body dysmorphic disorder. Okay, so the first one is conversion disorder. It falls under this category. Conversion disorder is a disorder marked by a paralysis, a weakness, or a loss of sensation, but there is no discernible physical cause. So this is the big portion that I was just talking about. For no reason, it occurs. You have medical symptoms, but there's no medical evidence, and it causes is tied to stress. Um, the symptoms, you can't see, you can't hear, you can't taste them, but you do have um, the physical sense that something's actually taking place. Another one of the somatoform disorders is what is they call is hypochondriasis. It's a disorder involving excessive worry about health and disease. You have physiological arousal, you're worried, you're anxious, and you often have health disturbances. Um, you are monitoring your body very closely. And then this is behavior designed to avoid or check for physical illness. So this might be that all of a sudden you start having a really bad um, cough. And you're coughing and you're coughing and you're coughing and now you're excessively worried about this cough. And now all of a sudden you think that you have this cough and it might be linked to some sort of respiratory infection, which then you think that maybe your lungs are going to shut down. So it's like you have a little symptom of something and you bring it into something that you think it's a really big mental illness. Body dysmorphic disorder is preoccupied with your image or exaggerated uh, defect in a personal appearance. So you're preoccupied with your body, your shape, um, your structure. So you have this girl looking at herself, and she sees herself in a, um, a very different vision from what she actually is. Um, the ex you exist, but not as bad as you take it. So maybe you do have like a pimple, but you think it's taking over your entire face. So you now this is where dysfunction breaks down. You avoid going to work or public situation. Sometimes it could be tied to depression. So Think about deviant distress, dysfunction. If you have thought process that you are so abnormally different and you have a fear now that people, the distress, that people are going to make fun of you and now you dysfunction where you don't go to work, this is where this disorder can become an issue. Uh, different people who had, um, I believe, are classified um, under bodily dysmorphic is Heidi Montag because she's had many different um, changes to her physical structure. Um, you could see that she's had um, lip injections and a nose job, um, whether or not she had um, her cheeks restructured. Okay, Sarah Burge is another one. She's a 50-year-old um, woman who's had over 100 procedures um, because she wants to look at like Barbie, and it's cost her over $1 million. She wants to look like the real-life Barbie. So you can see a picture of her on the left. Um, versus the picture of her on the right. Many different jobs done to change her appearance. Okay, another category is classified as dissociative disorders. Dissociative disorders, there is a sudden loss of memory or change in identity, often due to a stress from an overwhelming situation. So the whole classification is dis, uh, dissociative disorders. Dissociative means separate from body, so the mind is actually separate from the body. There's two types that you need to know. Dissociative fatigue and dissociative identity disorder. Um, both of them, their memory is separate than their conscious identity. Um, it's a disorder you so much that you can actually live a separate life if you can't necessarily remember your identity. So the first one that we'll look at is dissociative identity disorder. It was once called multiple um, personality disorder. 
It's where you speak, act, and write in several different ways. You can have several different personalities. Um, experts say the disorder appears first in childhood and may be a defensive response to an abusive situation or a terrifying event. So you maybe were abused as a kid and you don't want to be living that life and having all those thoughts come into your mind about how you were hurt. So you create an alternate personality to help manage that. Most of the emerging personalities contrast in some significant way with the original self. So one might be very calm and the other one may be very anxious. Problems in one's body and fighting for an opportunity. Opportunity, it can't be conscious at the same time. So they're never both coming out at the same time fighting one another. Oftentimes you're not even aware that you have multiple different personalities. Movies that have... Um, me, myself, and Irene, Fight Club, and Identity are three different ways that Hollywood spins them. Herschel Walker was a, is a, was a former NFL player who had dozens of personalities that in class we will hear from. Um, the 1950s case of Chris Seesmore was made into a movie. The Three Faces of Eve also describes uh, multiple personality disorder. And Sybil, um, 1950. Um, she was a teacher. She worked with a Freudian psychologist in the movie. Sybil discusses her different personalities. She has men, women, children all come out within her storyline. Okay, so the different causes of DAD. You could look at the psychoanalytical perspective or you can look at the behaviorist perspective. Psychoanalytical perspective is they believe you have a massive amount of unwanted impulses and you're hiding them underneath the surface and so this perspective allows them to come to the surface because you're creating a new personality behavior is everyone is capable of acting in different ways in different situations this disorder is the extreme variation of acting so different that you feel like a different person and it's strengthened by reward um, the true cause many believe that it's a result of trauma and experience both together some people also question if this disorder is real. That has been very skeptic in uh, many resources. The last one under dissociative disorders is dissociative fatigue. Dissociative fatigue is a combination of fatigue or amnesia. Sufferers not only suffer from a loss of identity, they also flee from their homes, jobs, or families. While most episodes last only a few hours or days, it can last longer. Um, so this is where you've had a really bad trauma or a really bad experience and you literally just forget who you are or your sense of identity. The heavy use of alcohol may predispose a person to dissociative fatigue. While this suggests um, that some brain impairments may be involved, no specific cause has been identified. Usually a lot of the times it's because of some sort of trauma.